Hello there, in this video my aim is to show you how to play through Dinosaur Planet on an unmodified cartridge, without cheats and without hacks. Although we can't trigger all of the events that the game would normally expect you to get to progress, we'll be able to trigger quite a few of them and get fairly far into the game as Crystal. I'll try not to talk too much over the cutscenes, he says while talking over a cutscene, and uh, I won't necessarily be talking the whole way through because sometimes I just won't have anything interesting to say. The majority of this footage is from streams I've done over the past couple of weeks, so I'll link those in the description. You should also check out Yume Aislin's videos, she's been documenting the natural progression with cheats on that shows more of the story cutscenes and uh, event flags that I miss out in this run, so I'll link that in the description as well. So the game starts off with this sort of shooter section which I believe is the same in Star Fox Adventures, it's been more than 10 years, probably approaching 20 years since I played it, so uh, I can't remember too much of it, but I will be going back to it at some point. If you're just interested in seeing the glitches and strategies to progress in the game, then I would advise skipping to 35 minutes, but if you want to see how the first 30 or so minutes of the game plays out, then stick with it, and I will provide poorly informed commentary. So this little section here is supposed to be a tutorial on how to fight, but unfortunately most of the times I've played this scene I've been unable to do any damage to the enemy due to some sort of glitch, although he can generally hit me. So you may as well just run straight past him, it doesn't really serve any purpose. You can see there I try and hit him and it doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> oh. 
I'm okay, I think. Now how do we steer the ship? At this point we're given this scene that just seems to go on for way too long and I'm wondering if there was supposed to be some kind of credit sequence going on here, some sort of title introduction or just something really because it seems very out of place just to have this transition. It could even potentially be a loading transition to load the next area that we're about to go to but I'm not sure why it needs to take this long. open the cage. It, it, it's okay. I'm not feeling too good anyway. This must be Warlock Mountain. So after ineffectively pouring at Kite's cage, we are off to the races. Interestingly, the line where she says, Crystal, get me out of here, is reused later on, and I think it's supposed to be cut, so she just says, Crystal, to save on memory, by using little lines of dialogue that are already there, so you don't have to record more dialogue. He can't help me. Our king sent us here to protect him. But scales appeared. You don't actually have to talk to this dinosaur. If you don't talk to him, he doesn't die. So actually, we have killed this man. These lasers in this next section can kill you. And if they do, because you die in the knockback animation, uh, if you choose to continue using a duster, then you become invincible. It's just something that happens if you die while in a big knockback animation. Happens with Fox and with Crystal, this is one of the few places you can get this to work with Crystal. Although the same glitch can happen if you die from falling from a height and then roll into water. So you can activate it anywhere that there's water and a significant height difference. Crystal. 
Randon, what's happened to you? It was scales, but I'll be fine. And what, what about you? No need to worry about me. You taught me well. Did you rescue the princess? Yes, but she's stuck in a cage on the galleon. My dear, dinosaur planet is in extreme danger. You must take this. This is my spell book. General Scales tore out most of the pages and cast them into the storm. Well, they must be scattered all over the planet by now. If you find a page and have collected enough magic energy, you can use this spell. I'll look out for them, so you don't have to worry about Scales anymore. It's not Scales I'm worried about. Let me tell you about the history of Dinosaur Planet. When time was just beginning, a race known as the Crusoe ruled this world and much of the universe. Though in a great battle, they and much of the universe were destroyed. And from this destruction came life. The dinosaur's god, the great Chimeria Dragon, created this world. And since that day, life has been good. At least until General Scales unleashed his army. But there's something else. The King Earthwalker had discovered this sacred place and began to think the ancient texts were hiding something. Maybe the history of the planet was wrong. You must go to Discovery Falls. You'll find some answers there. But what about you? And how will I find this place? As long as I stay here, then I'll be fine. The magic within this place is keeping me alive. Search this chamber for an object, and use it to escape from the mountain. This will take you to a friend of mine. He'll direct you and the princess to Discovery Fall. <laughs> So that's our history lesson over. We shoot the switch to get the item, one of the few items in the game that you can pick up without the game just crashing. I'll explain more on that later when we get to crash items. And then essentially you can just leave. Here I was just checking to see if a platform was active there that activates later when you come back here. There's no time to waste. You must go to Discovery Fall. You don't actually need to turn off the switches here, but it helps if you don't want to die. Interestingly, if you save and quit here before getting that cutscene, then the cutscene doesn't play and General Scales never leaves with the ship.
So with the prologue over, we warp to the main hub area for Crystal and then are immediately told that we need to play as Fox McCloud instead and we meet one of the characters who eventually ended up sounding like Shrek. Magic works. No, no, wait! I've got to find Discovery Falls! You've got lots of time to do that. Let me show you how the swap works. Now, now, don't be scared. Crystal's friend Saber is on the other side of the planet. To complete the adventure, you will have to guide both characters. To do this, you must visit me or my twin brother, Rocky. Do you understand? Good, now let's swap to Saber. Man, I sure hope Randon's right about this place. If the prince doesn't turn up soon, I think I might freeze to death. So the cutscene there is very much unchanged uh, in its final version in Star Fox Adventures. I think it even uses the same models, the textures are just updated. It's interesting to see how much of this game got copied across to the GameCube, as well as how much was lost uh, in the translation. A lot of the cutscenes are quite similar, just with different camera angles and uh, slight tweaks to the graphics. I should probably mention that I am playing this on an emulator. This is Moopin64 Plus Next via RetroArch with parallel RDP and RSP. It's fairly comparable to console in terms of accuracy when playing games, although we've found with testing for certain glitches and things that actually the game will crash more often on console than it will with emulators, uh, especially with this emulator. So if you're wondering why your graphics look a bit bugged, you're probably using the wrong kind of graphics plugin. The defaults for Project 64 may make some of the textures not appear properly. Like I say, this emulator is very accurate to hardware, so it's the one I would recommend. 
playing on original hardware. A lot of the game runs very slowly. We're talking sort of 15 to 20 frames per second a lot of the time, which was fairly standard for N64 games if you think about stuff like Ocarina of Time. But this game was really pushing the envelope for graphics and uh, it, it really shows with the frame rates on an uh, original N64 hardware. Dad's a King Earthwalker, and he'll bash you up. I don't think he'll be doing any bashing. He's been captured. That's why I've been sent to rescue you. He's been captured? That's right. So stop moaning, and let's get you back to your home. In this section you have to dig up a couple of roots to feed to the mammoth that you can see over in the distance there. sidekick commands. By using these, I can help you in lots of ways. If you press the down C button, you can activate this menu. Now, press it again to highlight the commands you want me to do. Now press A to activate. Before Tricky can actually dig anything up, you need to see that cutscene, and he won't dig anything up from the root dig sites until you have dug something else up. So you can either come over here and dig up this ball, or you can go over to where the mammoth is and dig up a cave entrance. The ball is a little bit useful, it has some uses, you can push some NPCs around with it if you get tricky to kind of run towards them chasing the ball, but we're not going to really be using any of that in this run. Might come up in a future video if I make one of Fox's route. Mushrooms. I'm feeling real tired. The mammoth will want to eat two of these roots, so you need to get both of them, and unfortunately you can't talk to the mammoth while it's night. It just goes to sleep. I'm 
I'm too tired to do this right now. Handily though, there is a time save here. If you get tricky to dig up this cave, then entering it and exiting it will change the time of day back to day. And then we can feed the mammoth. One foot is never enough. I'm starving. Get out of the clearing, push the boulder from the geyser. Um, ah, that, that hit the spot. Tell you what, young'un, I'll help you out. Here you are, my boy. This is a map of the Snowhorn Wastes. You can collect maps from other tribes. I'm sure they'll be useful on your adventure. This block can be a little bit buggy, sometimes it will get stuck in a position where you can't climb on it to get out of the area. If that happens, you can always save and reload your save. Or pulling the block and pushing it again will sometimes get it back into the right position. You'll see it clip through the floor just about here. You can see it jiggled there. That can sometimes happen right at the end of the track here and leave you trapped in the area. So there's not really much to say about this area in the way we're going to be doing it here. You can jump across just in front here where you can see those rocks and clip through them to get to an area that normally you'd only be able to access later, although it's inaccessible in this build without cheats or hacks anyway, unless you jump across. But essentially we're just going to run through to the next area because there's nothing for us to do here. So I'm going to pick up a couple of key items here. We need one of these purple floating dandelion seeds. And we need one of these white mushrooms.
I'm gonna make a quick jump cut in a second because I didn't realize that I didn't feed the white mushroom to the Queen Earthwalker, so I ran around a bit before realizing actually I needed to go back and feed her it. Tricky, what's happened? It was a sharp claws. They came here after I was kidnapped. Son, I am not well. You must find me a remedy. We need to collect ten white mushrooms. They're a medicine for Earthwalkers. Let's go. There's no time to lose. Thank you, Fox. Thank you for saving my son. And for saving me. That's okay. Now if you don't need me any further, then I'll be off. Wait! Randorn warned me you would be like this. The planet needs your help. This is a force point temple. It is used to extract pure magic energy from deep within the core of our planet. This energy is then transmitted across the world for our people to use. General Scales has taken over two of the temples and is planning to use this energy for evil. So why do you need me? When the temples were constructed, a shutdown mechanism was hidden within. In a time of danger, the energy extraction could be stopped. You and Crystal must find the objects designed to do this job. The six spell stones. Look, I'm sorry that you're in all of this trouble. I really am. But I've done what I was asked to do. If you don't want to do this for me, then do it for Randorn. What do you mean? He has been mortally wounded by scales. If the magic energy extraction is not stopped, then he will not survive. Come on, Tricky. Let's get going. The purple mushrooms hold a special secret. Use them to open the path to the swap stone. So the reason I realized I hadn't actually fed her the white mushroom is doing so gets a dinosaur to move off a patch of earth that we need to plant that dandelion seed in. So I came over here, realized the dinosaur was still there and went, oh, actually, no, I didn't feed her. I just triggered the first cutscene where she says she needs the medicine. So you just plant this here. It won't grow until you walk away a little bit. And then you can just hit it or shoot it with a laser and it will explode. And that's everything we're going to do with Fox now. So we're going to switch back to Crystal and this is where the interesting stuff starts to happen. So the first thing we're going to do with Crystal is Early Princess. You are supposed to go to an area called Cape Claw where you would get the princess out of a cage by unlocking it with a key. Unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, picking up most items in the game will crash the game, including this key. 
And so what we have to do is go to an area where we can spawn Kite into the world and get her in our inventory, so to speak. You can do that in an area near the area she's supposed to spawn in the cage, and I'm going to show you the quickest way to get there. You hit those trees in this order and it opens this door. And we're going to set up for a backwards super slide here. There are other places in the game you can do this. You can set up a slide on any wall just by running against the wall and then holding the Z button to go into A mode. And sometimes you'll just start sliding. But if you have enough momentum by jamming yourself between two objects, or an object and a wall, like so, you start sliding backwards. Now that's not as fast as I want to go. The way to set this up is you run in here, turn to the left, start holding the Z button, and you start moving first. It's important not to turn your back to a wall too much, or you might clip through the wall, and that can clip you through the floor and lead you to a certain death. Anyway, the camera helpfully switches around behind us when we go through the door here so we can aim better, and we're heading out to Cape Claw now. There's lots of ways to get to the area we're going to go to here, but the quickest way by far is to do this. You can also use the log, if you're familiar with the game, you can use the log to get to where we're going. You can even swim around the death planes. This is important. Here, the only place you can drop off here is where I drop off there. So you kind of have to thread the needle across that bridge. The reason is that even if you're sliding, Crystal will still grab ledges if she falls off them, but that area there on that ledge doesn't count as a grabbable ledge. The intended progression here would be to pick up a gold nugget from a cave. The cave quite often crashes if you try to enter it, and even if you can enter it, one, the nugget doesn't always spawn, two, the game will crash if you pick up the nugget, and three, there is no three. If there is, I forget it. Anyway, you give the nugget to a guard, the guard lets you into a gas chamber, Crystal starts to die, the gas chamber tends to crash as well, although you can get through it. Once you're through the gas chamber, you go to where Kite's cage is, and then you kill a guard, pick up a key which will also crash the game, and then unlock Kite from the cage, which is not possible in a base build. Now, there's quicker ways to get back. If you turn to the right at this point here, and go through an invisible cave, you can come up and out of the giant Krizoa head statue, which is faster, but sometimes it can lead the world to be unloaded, and it makes it very difficult to see for when we come back here in future. We have to come back and pick up Kite from this area every time we lose her in this run, and you lose her like three or four times, I forget uh, how many, but we'll, we'll count as we go along. It's also quite difficult to get Kite to follow you out of the area, because she'll get stuck around the cage area, either trying to pull the switches that are near it, or just getting herself trapped in the cage. You don't need to worry about her being with you though, you just need to make sure she's in your inventory. From there we're going to go back to the exact same spot where we set up for the super slide and we're going to do it again to get to the next area. You also need to bust this guy out of this cage and get the magic from him. We're not really going to need to use this magic in this run. Uh, I guess you need it to get the first Krizoa, but if you don't get it from him, I find it makes the next area become quite unstable for some reason, so it will crash the game generally as you try to come out of the Lightfoot village. Are you okay? What sort of dinosaur are you? You look pretty strange to me. It's okay, you don't need to be scared. What have you got there? I found this on the beach. Here, girl, you take it. You're gonna need it.
So we're going to set up for a super slide again. This time we don't need to be going as fast. And the reason is if you go too fast while doing what we're about to do, then it can cause the game to crash. I'm also grabbing some magic just because there's some enemies I'll need to kill by shooting fireballs at them in a minute. So I need to make sure I've got enough magic for that. So this speed, like I say, is fine because if we go too fast, then the game is more likely to crash. It's something to do with uh, loading transitions. If you move too fast through a loading transition, it can crash the game because it gets upset that it can't load its data fast enough. You'll see me go into the desert area here and then back out. The reason I do this is because I couldn't progress to Discovery Falls without going through the desert on this occasion. For some reason, it would just repeatedly crash and the desert area tends to make the swap stone area more stable if you just go in, head towards the nugget tree and then come out. You don't always need to do this. This is the first time I've ever needed to do this while doing this run. It's just luck of the draw, really. It might be something to do with the swap stone glitch where he thinks you're the wrong character sometimes. But essentially what you want to do here is hug the right hand wall and then drop down into this little hole and you're in Discovery Falls. Now, a quicker way to do this was found. You don't need to backwards slide in here. What you do is you press up, C up and Z at the same time to do a water drop, then repeatedly hit A to slap your way into the hole. That cutscene will not trigger if Kite's not in your inventory, from what I've been told. I've never been here without Kite in my inventory, though. And as you can see, she warps to you after the cutscene, so it's a good way to get her back by your side. Now we're going to take this log over here to one of my favourite cutscenes. to be a shrine. Before it could be opened, General Scales arrived and took Randor. This must have happened before I arrived on this planet. It was Randor. I'm glad he's still alive. I had feared the worst. So far, the Shark Corps have failed to open the shrine, but I do not think it will take them much longer. Above you is a cave. Inside the cave, we discovered what appears to be a link to opening the shrine. It is up to you now to uncover its secrets. I just love how this guy just slides into the water. That water's not even that deep. Who knows where he goes? It's great. I love him. The log is a little bit finicky. I don't like being on the log because getting off the log is difficult and often you'll just clip through the floor, which can be used for a glitch uh, called a log launch, which can shoot you massively high up into the air and get you to out of bounds areas which contain things like the final boss fight, but it can also just crash the game. So I try to avoid logs where I can. We're going to progress through this area as normal, but you can skip doing most of this to get the item we have come here to get. We will be pushing a series of switches in order to open a door that will lead to a Krizoa test, but you don't actually need to push any but one of the switches. 
you can just clip through the door using a clip called food clip which is integral to this run but I'll be explaining it later when I actually start using it. These two enemies are why I picked up that magic earlier. You need to be able to shoot four times to kill these guys. An easy way to get magic back is just to die though, and that will fill up your magic bar if you come back using a duster, which is the continue in this game. So the idea of these switches is that they're going to open that door eventually. Like I said, this is the only switch we need to push just so we can get the ladder and we can climb up it again. You can kill the sharp claw who gives you the food bag. He's got no friends, so really it might be a mercy if you do, but everyone always tells me not to, so once again I have shown him mercy.
Regardless of whether or not you're going to push all the switches, you do need to activate that because it gets you to the area we are going to. It's the only way easily to get high enough up to get to the Krizoa test of strength. Test of might? Test of something. Test of combat. It's the test of combat. I hate this room just because of how poorly the shield is implemented. Whenever you do anything, it cancels your shield. If you try to go into aim mode, if you pick up a barrel, if you put down a barrel. So it's really badly designed and hopefully if they had ever finished this version of the game, they would have addressed those issues. If you shoot the switches on the wall, then it reverses the direction that the elevator is moving, so I just shoot this here so that it'll come over to me. First egg of the run, very important. It's usually important to have at least two eggs on you for clipping through walls. We won't actually be clipping through any walls for a little while though. Although if we wanted to, we'd only need two eggs to clip through into the Krizoa test of combat. You need two to clip out though as well, and you can't always use the same eggs to clip in and out. So for this area, I'd suggest having at least three eggs if you're going to clip through the door. This little guy is very fun, he looks like a roast chicken. He eats food and then digs holes near where the food was. I wonder if he was going to be implemented anywhere else in the game as well, or whether it's just here, but he's a fun little companion that you have for a couple of minutes. He's not great at pathing, so he does take a little while to find his hole. But all the same, he is an asset to the team.
So here Kite pulls a rope to attach it so that we can swing across. Now, you have to do this area the first time you come here because Kite can never pull this rope across again. This cutscene only ever activates once, and if you come back here you can't get this rope to come across and it will have untied itself. So unless you go over here and grab the Krizoa the first time you're here, uh, you can always come back later if you haven't activated the rope, but if you come back and you've already activated the rope and not grabbed the Krizoa, then you just can't get to the Krizoa easily.
So this puzzle has never worked right for me. What you're supposed to do is drop one of the barrels in the water here and it will get pulled around by the current and then you shoot it to break the crack and that drains the water so you can go and pull the switch. Now, no matter how many times I've tried to do this, I have not been able to break that wall. And it may be because I haven't set a flag that you need to set by picking up the kite key and getting her out of the cage properly. So what I do is I reload a state save here, and if you're holding an item, then you can walk underwater. So you just walk over here with barrel in hand and push the switch. So here, if you want, you can take the log and ride it over the waterfall. I think on console that is more stable from what I've been told, but what I do is I swim over here, I do a C up drop, so you push forwards, hold Z and C up at the same time, and that will drop you to the bottom of any body of water, and that for some reason breaks the current, so you can just keep swimming past there. Just run past this guy, and we're on to the Krizoa test of combat. where I mentioned before that we would need the shield spell for the Krizoa Shrine. This is the reason. You have to shut off the beams that are keeping this door locked by running through them with the shield on. You can probably just clip through the door as well, but this is easier and, you know, you're supposed to have this spell by this point anyway. Now if you did clip through the door here, your eggs will still be on the other side of the door, so you can always pick those up on the way out, but you'll need at least two eggs to leave this area. You can probably get some in the test of combat itself, because they'll be in the boxes around there, but the door will still be closed, so you do have to clip through it if you're going back here. 
From here, we're just going to go all the way back to the Swap Stone and we're going to go to the Warlock Mountain so that we can bank our Krizoa. Unfortunately, whenever you go to a new area, warp like that, when you've got Kite in the way we have from the Princess Beach with the early Princess Strat, we don't have Kite in our inventory anymore. So she has abandoned us, and if we want to get her again, we have to go all the way back to the beach. So that's why I said we need to go back there a few times on this run. It's a good time now to put the Krizoa away because, again, warping to the Warlock Mountain will take Kite out of your inventory. So you may as well go put the Krizoa away and then go get Kite afterwards. Warlock Mountain does strange things to your food inventory. So what I would advise is if you have any food in your inventory at the moment, you should probably get rid of it. The reason being, when you're at Warlock Mountain, your food just kind of ticks upwards. Now, food is supposed to rot in your inventory, and if you want it to stop rotting, you can put it on the ground, pick it back up again, and a rotten egg or a rotten mushroom or whatever food item it is you've got in your pouch will turn back to a non-rotten ripe fruit, whatever it may be. For some reason, this is broken in Warlock Mountain, and all rotten fruit becomes ripe fruit rather than getting removed from your inventory, which can lead you to having a very large number of apples in your inventory because for some reason when you go to Warlock Mountain all of your food items get converted to apples. It's all very strange. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I'm pretty sure you end up with either infinite or near infinite apples in your inventory which can cause problems with certain glitches later on, and it probably just makes the game a bit unstable in general. So, long story short, eat all your food or pop it on the floor before you warp to Warlock Mountain. And there you can see, I'm just checking my inventory to make sure I don't have any food on me. Oh, not you again. Are you ready to walk to Warlock Mountain? So interestingly, Kite is here when you enter this area. You can't do anything with her though because you have no access to your inventory when you walk to the Warlock Mountain. Again, not sure why. It causes some issues later on though and we'll have to save and quit to get access back to our inventory or if you die, you can get access back. So if the laser beams are still active here, you can just kill yourself, come back to life in zombie mode and you'll have access to your inventory again. So it's whatever your preference is. Because we turned them off earlier when we were here the first time, they're still off, so they remain off there. You don't need to get the next cutscene, but we will. Ah, Crystal, my dear. So tell me, what did you find at Discovery Falls? She found a map. I am Quan Atalachu, first spirit born, one star of eight. Are you a Krizoa? The Krizoa? They worship us. Their thoughts reside with us in each shrine. It is they that test you. Who are the Krizoa? I'm not quite sure. I found some records of an ancient civilization from before the time of the dinosaurs. Shh. I am the first. There are seven more that you must bring to this place. Why should we do what you say? 
It is only by the will of life that the spirit can bring peace. You will find us all. We must continue. Take me into the chamber. So I've had that cutscene crash a lot of times, which is why I found out that you could skip it. I'm not sure why I got crashes with it, but it's probably something to do with the sequence of things I did. Maybe I did something too late or too soon and the game didn't like it. It may be because I had infinite apples in my inventory. So now we're going to bank the Krizoa. You can come in here and shoot this crystal to open a door to a kind of planetarium. As far as I'm aware, this area doesn't serve any purpose. I don't think we've found out what it's for yet. It may just be that this is where the cutscene where Randorn tells you about the planets and the history of the solar system is held so that it can show you the actors for that. But uh, it's kind of neat that you can go in here. It may be that when you get more Krizoas later in the game, it is supposed to warp you somewhere. And also the reason I spent some time looking up here is because I'm pretty sure that one of the planets here is actually the same model as Tricky's ball. So I think it's the one that is orbiting Saturn here. And if this game had been fully converted to a Star Fox game at this point, all of these planets may have been the planets from Star Fox 64. So I'm going to fade this out here because I needed to save and restart the game in order to get access back to my inventory. You can see what I meant about the apples. I've just got 10 apples in my inventory out of nowhere. That's just from being in the Warlock Mountain area. If you have more food in your inventory, it seems to get worse. 
So here what we're going to do is we're going to set up for another backwards super slide and we're going to go all the way to Princess Beach and get Princess Kite back again for the re-princess. I am going to speed up the footage but um, I'll wait until we get moving fast again. Everything is going to be sped up now until we get back to Discovery Falls just because you've already seen how to do it. We're going to be doing the same thing. Again, to get to Discovery Falls you can do the C up uh, Z drop in the water if you want to or you can backwards super slide. Either one works. So just jam yourself into the pot, hold to the left, hold Z down, and then skate all the way over here. Across the bridge, round there, under the waterfall. Again, we're going to grab Kite here, and then we're going to go all the way back. In the bottom right here, we've just got footage of what happens if you come out through the Krizoa head. Like I say, sometimes it leads to the Cape Claw area completely deloading, which can make it very difficult to get back here again when you're uh, going for Kite for the next time, because it makes it very difficult to look for where you need to turn on the bridge and then get into the water under the waterfall. But essentially you pop out down the bottom and you're back on the beach. So I get another slide going here and then I head back to Discovery Falls and then we're going to progress on to Moon Mountain Pass. Again I go through the desert here just to make sure everything's stable but you don't always need to. So normally by this point we would have played as Fox again. What's supposed to happen is you're supposed to get the Krizoa as Crystal, swap back to Fox, Fox gets a new ability for Tricky called Distract, but in this version of the game you actually get the command to throw Tricky's ball, which you already got in the first area. So that doesn't really help and Tricky never learns Distract. There's other reasons why I couldn't progress as Fox at this point, however I am learning new strategies to progress as Fox and I am going to see if actually we can do things in the correct order without needing cheats or hacks with Fox. When you get back from being Fox and getting his Spellstone, which is what's supposed to happen after you bank the Krizoa as Crystal, you get a key from the Lightfoot Village Chief and then you use that key to get into the front gate of Moon Mountain Pass. Now, we needed Kite for this uh, because otherwise certain cutscenes don't trigger while we're here and the game is less stable, so that's why we went all the way and grabbed her again. I slap on the left hand side here because this area is very crash heavy and I find this helps to stop this uh, next cutscene from crashing the game. When I got to this area for the first time I was like, oh crap, how am I going to get through here? Because I hadn't discovered Food Clip yet, which is actually how I got out of this area because the door remains locked if you don't have the key. So I was like, well how am I going to get up there? Like I didn't have an up warp or anything at the time. I just walked over here and you just pop through the floor. So there's no trick to that, you just walk and you pop up. This room is quite unstable and crashes quite often. I think here I'm looking for food items, which is why I broke that box, but you don't really need them because there's an apple on the floor here, there's an apple tree that produces infinite apples just above your head, and there's some boxes further up that give you eggs. A hierarchy of food items, eggs are the best, sausages the next best, apples 
Uh, I mean, you can use them if you have to. And then mushrooms I hate. I hate mushrooms. I don't use grubs, but grubs are there too. But mushrooms rot so quickly, it's awful. Eggs are so much better, and eggs also have a larger hitbox, which is really useful for some other clips that I'll show later on. Anyway, you just progress here, and we'll have another cutscene in a second. So this is really cool because what's in front of us is a static image of what the next area we're about to go into looks like. I'll finish this thought after the cutscene. What are those flying things? Have you ever seen anything like it before? I've got a feeling that Scales isn't doing this alone. So on original hardware, when you're running at like 240p or whatever the game runs at normally, when you get to that area and the lightning flashes, it's not going to look any different because it's going to be just as blurry as the JPEG that they're using to obscure the loading zone. There's a couple of areas in the game that do this, and I think it's so clever just that they can use that for that slight little bit of loading hitch that they need. Flash a lightning and get rid of that static image and you're in the next area. It's such a good idea. So if you don't have Kite with you in this area when you need to trigger that cutscene, all of the actors for the cutscene are just stacked up in a pile in the central platform where that cutscene happens, and it breaks the game progression. So that's why we need Kite in our inventory, but it looks very funny if you come here without having her. Here, take this. This spell creates the illusion of being someone else. Try it on the sharp claw. Now that we have the disguise, we can sneak out of jail, so we can sneak past this sharp claw because we trick him into thinking that we are one of his brethren. Now I'm just going to show you how you can actually pick up items in this game that would usually crash the game. If you put an item on the floor while picking an item up, then it stops the game from crashing. However, it doesn't put the item in your inventory in most cases. There's two important cases where you will be able to get the item in your inventory though, which are coming up quite shortly after this. However, right now what we need to do is just go get Kite again, because without Kite in our inventory, we can't progress to the next part of this area without the game crashing. You can go there, but the game will crash.
Come on. I get you. So this is going to be our first instance of food clip. The reason I go over here is to pick up an apple, so I've got at least two food items in my inventory. The way this works is, food has a collision. The collision pushes you away from it into a wall. Walls want to push you away, but they can't push you away into the egg. So, as long as you're jammed between the egg and the wall here, when you place another food item, it allows you to then move through that wall. For some reason, the animation of putting a food item down kind of clips you inside of the wall's hitbox and stops you from being repelled. At the moment I'm just speeding up the footage because all we're doing is going back and getting Princess Kite again and then we're coming all the way back here, so it's just going to be sped up. The reason walls work like this, from what I understand, is it's similar to in Mario 64, how the wall isn't a solid object, it's a force that pushes you away from it. So, rather than you just not being able to walk through it, actually, you just can't walk into it because it's repelling you with as much force as you're moving towards it with. So if you can move faster than that force, then you can move through that repelling force. Or, if you can have a stronger opposing force, like an item pushing you, and then you can somehow cancel the kind of forces by putting an item on the floor, then it will allow you to move through that pushing force. This is actually the last time we need to come and get kite here, so you can go back any way you want. If you want to go back via the Krizoa head, be my guest. The reason I always go around the left of those pillars instead of the right there, by the way, is because this area kind of deloads if you go around the right hand side of those pillars, so it stops the floor from deloading and you falling into the bottomless pit. So we're going to clip up here in the same way and grab our eggs again, just because I worry that leaving too many items out on the floor could lead to problems with the memory and potentially make the game run worse and buggier. So I'm using a leave no egg behind strategy here in order to clean up my messes where I can. Again, we're coming up on that nice transition. Flash and it loads the next area. I think that's so cool.
Now I'm about to show off another glitch here. If you pick these items up, like a lot of items, it will crash the game. However, if you pick the item up and repeatedly mash the A button, then it will cancel the cutscene of you picking the item up, and it goes into your inventory. You can also put items down on the floor while picking these up, like I did with the key earlier, and it'll still go into your inventory. You do not need to do this to progress, but I think it sets an important flag that I'll discuss later. Once you have all three of them, you need to clip into this generator room. I think the door is supposed to open if you free one of the characters from the prison earlier on, but we can't do that because we can't pick up the key, so we've just got to clip in here. Now, you can mitigate any damage from the radiation in this room with the shield, but because we've got unlimited continues, it's not really necessary. You can see I'm having a little bit of trouble clipping in here just because the distance the egg needs to be from the wall is quite specific. It varies depending on what type of door you're trying to get through. Thicker doors are a little bit more tricky to get through. This one's not super thick, but uh, it's harder than some. So this cutscene shows you that you have turned on all of the wind turbines in this area. You can turn them on by clipping through a stack of rubble over on the right hand side of this courtyard area, and then hitting a switch three times, which is why you can skip turning on the generator if you don't feel like it. However, getting this guy who is the spellstone guardian out of the prison is important to allow him to purify your spellstone later, or activate it, whatever he says. This bit's a little bit funny, you've just got to kind of push him here, and you've got to make sure when you push him that you land far enough into this platform that when his cutscene triggers to talk to you, you aren't just floating in midair, because otherwise the game will crash. Princess Kate is still alive. You must find her. The sharp claw are holding her in the royal chambers. <laughs> So, at this point, if Kite is not in your inventory and you go up here, the game will crash. You can also go round to the right through that rubble that I was talking about clipping through earlier, but it breaks a progression flag and makes this area much, much harder to do. So, go up the left, it seems to be intended. From here, you're going to need to go upstairs and enter the kind of throne room courtyard area for Cloudrunner Fortress. In lore, this area is where Kite and her mother the Queen, peace be upon her, 
as well as Kite's brothers, all live and presumably rule over the Cloud Runner kingdom, which is probably in the sky somewhere. You pull both these switches and it'll open the door. In this part of the game, Kite has been taken from you again when you get taken to prison and she's been locked in a cage. Now, she's in our inventory, so she's not really in the cage, but for the cutscene to work where you get her out of the cage, she has to be in your inventory, which is why we had to go back and get her. As well as just to be able to enter this area, because otherwise it generally crashes. So once we've pulled these switches, we can get into the courtyard and we can start freeing Kite from the cage, which is just above there. You can see a crack in the floor, you need to blow it up with some barrels. This man has a key to the explosive barrel room. You can't pick up the key without the game crashing, but if you place a food item on the floor while picking this key up, it skips the cutscene and that lets you get the key. This is one of two items I've found in the game that go into your inventory when you do this, other than those three that we got earlier to activate the generator room, which are much easier to pick up than a lot of things that crash the game. So we're just going to go out here and we're going to unlock the explosive barrel room and use the barrels to unlock Kite from her cage. This can be a little bit fiddly. I found that if you're on the floor here and you throw the barrel, it will go up. Sometimes it'll go up in the air if you are jumping and you throw it, but for some reason that wasn't working for me on this try, so uh, I had to land before putting them down. If anyone's played this area in Star Fox Adventures, it's very annoying to maneuver these barrels across the wind channels that uh, you need to in Star Fox Adventures. It's much easier in this game, but it's still quite annoying some of my enduring memories of Star Fox from about 20 years ago, even though I don't remember all of it, you know, I, I can remember these barrels being really frustrating. If the barrel kind of clips into the wall like that, you can't pick it up, which is annoying, so uh, I have to go back and get another one. We need three in total. Well, four if you count the one we used to destroy this wall as well, but we need three to blow up the, uh, the area where Kite is. You can see that that barrel didn't go up in the air there, but I think it resets and starts floating once we get this one out of the way. The first time I did all of this, I didn't know you could pick up that key without the game crashing, so I actually clipped into and out of the room with the barrels and uh, had to kind of clip them through the wall. It took a lot longer, so it's nice to find that that key actually works. So you blow up the last barrel and then as you approach after exploding it, you get the cutscene where Kite flies out of her cage. Did you find the Guardian yet? Guardian? You mean a Spellstone Guardian? Yes! He was locked up in the dungeon! So that's who he was. Yes, he's waiting for us in the courtyard. Good! That 
means Scales hasn't found the Spellstone yet, but we've got to hurry. When the Shark Claws attacked, my mother hid my five brothers around the fortress. We've got to find them. To help us, I've learned a new skill. Now, the reason I choose to go up and out of here rather than through the tunnel with the exploded rock is for a couple of reasons. One, kite paths a lot better to you if you go up out of the ladder, I find. And two, it seems to make the next thing we do more stable. We're going to go into the uh, the ship there, the galleon, and um, we need to use kite, who has now learned distract, to distract these guards. I had this area crash quite a lot when I was doing this, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I think going up and out rather than going straight forward is one of the things that stopped this area from crashing. The Sharp Claw who's in here throwing barrels at you, if he runs out of barrels, then he runs out a door in the back and uh, you don't kill him. It doesn't matter if you kill him or not, it's uh, just interesting to see that he will run away if he runs out of barrels. You grab the first of Kite's brothers. There's supposed to be a cutscene trigger here, because General Scales is down below deck and you're probably supposed to overhear a conversation from him here, but for whatever reason, it's not triggering for me. As you leave, sometimes it crashes. This is the crash I was talking about. I can't figure out why it was or wasn't crashing, but it's fine there, so. It may be that it's just leaving slowly enough that the um, brother of Kite has time to get back to his perch before you get there. The way you get out of this, because you don't have Kite to use Distract anymore, is you just die, and then when you get up, you can kind of just clip out of here. I almost fall there, but it's okay. It's, I made that look harder than it actually is. Then Kite will respawn here. She'll respawn here, there she is. And uh, you can progress to get the next brother. So this order is probably the quickest order to do it in. You do the galleon first, and then you go around in a bit of a loop, distracting the brothers with Kite and picking them up. Kite takes a while to path to objects that you want her to be dealing with, which is a little annoying, but at least once she presses this switch for the first time, she never has to press it again. This door will always remain open. Before, when I said that you could turn on the wind turbines by clipping through the rocks on the right-hand side, so that puts you in this room. That's the rock you clip through. And if you pull this turbine like two or three times, uh, even while it's off, then it will switch on. Here to the right is a sausage. There is a sausage tree here that drops sausages. They're called beans in game, but they look like sausages. So if you need any extra food items, you can always go to the sausage tree. You also see me drop and pick back up an egg there. That's because food items rot in your inventory. It's not so bad with eggs. They go off a lot slower than apples and much, much slower than mushrooms. If you're playing as fox, you have to use mushrooms and you're constantly juggling them and it's awful. I did mention this before, but if you put a rotting piece of item on the floor and pick it back up, then it will become a ripe piece of fruit or egg or whatever it is you're picking up, sausage potentially, so you can uh, keep it in your inventory for a bit longer without it disappearing. Them. 
so after you grab this brother, there's a little extra cutscene. For some reason, you can use the seek it out command with Kite here, and you can get a little, like, chat with her that doesn't really do anything, but uh, it's just interesting to see that you can do it here and basically nowhere else in the game. Scales is not going to get away with this. So now we need to go down to the treasure rooms and what I'm looking at here when I peer over this edge is just to see if I could drop down and whether it'd be quicker, but you can't so I have to go the wrong way around. That's my bad for just not routing properly before doing this recording. And here I try to do a C up drop off a ledge, so if you press C up while you're grabbing a ledge then you can drop instantly from the ledge, but unfortunately for that ledge you just end up standing on top of it, so I just had to walk off by the ladder. The scene that's about to happen you can sometimes trigger without having got the other four brothers first. I'm not sure why, because these doors are only supposed to open with four brothers, but you can do it, I have done it. It's probably less stable. The end part of the cutscene there is a little bit bugged. I think you can get it to show up in certain situations, but I think it's just him locking Kite's brother in this box. So we need to go get the key off him. Now, keys crash the game, as we know. This is the only key I have managed to pick up in the game without putting an item on the floor first. I'm not sure how I did it. I've never been able to replicate it. If I could, then I might be able to progress better in the game. If you drop an item while you're hanging off that ledge, you can just walk on that ledge for some reason. Here I go and grab a barrel because we're going to use it to kill the sharp claw who has the key. So you put it in this unstable cavern and then you get a little cutscene that tells you that the cavern is unstable. So you blow up the barrel, or if you're me, you fail to blow up the barrel a couple of times and then blow up the barrel. And you flatten that guard claw. So again, this key, I tried to pick it up, wasn't having it, so I had to resort to picking it up by using a food item. I found out recently as well you can use the Z look and C up trick at the same time to pick up the item uh, without the game crashing as well. So you can use that if you don't have any eggs on you or if you don't have a sausage to hand or anything like that. So here I'm just trying to replicate what I did when I first picked up the key without the game crashing, which was just kind of wait a little while because I was exclaiming, what if this is the only key that I can pick up? And uh, yeah, well, as you can see, Lightning did not strike again, but we can pick it up this way, so that's fine. It goes into your inventory, and you can use this to get Kite's last brother. I'm not sure why these are the only two keys in the game that you can do this with. The key to Kite's cage doesn't do it. The keys in the Snowhorn Wastes in Dark Ice Mines don't do it as Fox. There's basically no item, really, you can pick up off the floor in this way, other than those two keys and the crystals that go into the nuclear generator, the one that powers the fans in this area. 
so it's strange and there are fixes for it if you're using cheat codes which just replace the model that you pick up for the cutscene what's happening when the game crashes is it's trying to play a cutscene it's trying to call a model that spins in your hands to show that you've picked up that item and for whatever reason that model or that animation doesn't exist so it just crashes the game Here I'm picking back up my sausage that I left over here because I want to make sure I'm not leaving too many items of food just scattered about, just in case it starts to cause issues later in the game. I worry about things being left on the floor. With all of Kite's brothers in position, we're going to head back to the throne room and stick Kite on the last remaining pillar, and what that will do is drain the water in the courtyard so that we can go down to the area where General Scales is holding the Spellstone. Kite will take a while to path to this switch, but she gets there eventually. A couple of funny things happen here, the Spellstone Guardian, the guy we busted out of prison earlier, is still in this courtyard. Even when the water has been drained you can go over and talk to him. And he has the same dialogue as when he's down here. You can also get down here using a water drop, or by sliding down here, or slapping your way down off a ledge. And it works normally up until you get the Spellstone, but then you can't get the Spellstone Guardian to activate it. Scales has been waiting for you to do the hard work for him, and now they've got their spell stone. Stop wasting time and bring it to me. You're going to have to stop them. So, we meet again, General Scales. Why, if it isn't the animal girl? I thought you were dead. How did you survive the fall from the galleon? I have been given powers that you can only dream of.
So the idea here is to catch up with the front sharp claw's bike and just bump him repeatedly in the back until his bike explodes and then you get the spell stone. You can kill both of the sharp claws but you don't need to, you only need to kill the one with the spell stone. Sometimes their AI messes up here and they just start driving into the wall and it's quite funny. Don't you want me to activate that spellstone for you? It cannot be placed into the Force Point Temple until it is activated. Mm. For whatever reason, the audio completely breaks here. It goes silent, so I've got no qualms about talking over this because there is no music, there is no dialogue. Interestingly, after he activates the spellstone here, it doesn't look any different, whereas if you activate a spellstone as Fox, it takes on a completely different appearance. However, this spellstone continues to work after activated, whereas Fox's one does not work at all after activation, which is a little bit strange. Quite often the game will just crash as you try to get out of this room, with the activated spellstone and sometimes without, but I got away with it here without even needing to save state or anything. As you climb up this ladder, it's interesting that Kite despawns and then she respawns in the next area as you go up to it. So if you keep an eye on the green dot on the map, then you'll see that she blips out in a second and then she blips back in once we get to a certain height on the ladder. There she's gone now. And she's back as we go through the tunnel. Like I mentioned before, this guy is still here in the courtyard and you can go talk to him and he'll have the same dialogue as before. I'm not sure if you can get him to activate the spellstone here, but you probably can do.
Here I'm just making sure I've got enough food items before we leave, so I refresh my sausage and I get an egg out of this box, because we need at least two food items to clip out of this area. As you'll see though, leaving Cloudrunner Fortress without a crash can be difficult at this stage. For some reason, having the spellstone in your inventory causes problems with crashes as you head back to Discovery Falls. When all this is over, I must return to rule as queen. I think you'll make a wonderful queen, Kite. Your mother would have been so proud. Scales is not going to get away with this. Let's get this spellstone to the False Point Temple. Maybe the swap stone can point us in the right direction. I find it quite funny that the tear just stays there, clearly it's not finalised. Uh, you can tell from a lot of the text actually in the subtitles that one, things have changed so sometimes it'll refer to Fox as Saber or Saber as Fox in the subtitles but the voice acting doesn't match up with it and there's just a lot of inconsistencies, clearly the story was going through some reworks still and I think some of it's just been missed in editing. Here what I'm doing is trying to get Kite to come over here, she kind of gets stuck in the Cloudrunner Fortress entrance at this point, so I'm using Distract on an enemy that's on the ledge above to see if she'll come over, and she just won't. It's very difficult to get Kite to follow you here, which is possibly why the game starts crashing when you get back to Discovery Falls here. Again we're going to clip through this door in the same way, put an egg down, move yourself between the wall and the egg, put another egg or maybe a sausage down, grab it through the wall if you want to, couldn't get the other one, and head down. Now, the game is going to crash here, I've left that in just to show that it's quite difficult to get out of here. I'm going to show you how to get out of here in a way that's quite technical and not really helpful, and then I'll tell you what you're really supposed to do at this point. So there it is, good old Fault in Thread 3, my favourite. So we're going to head back up and I'm going to show you how to get to Moon Mountain Pass proper from here. Again, I'm just trying to grab my egg here. I don't need it, but I want it. Walk up here the same way we did before, just clip through the floor. This time we're going to stay up here though, we're not going to drop down. We're going to move over to this ledge and get ourselves as close to the wall as we possibly can. From there we're going to drop off the ledge and as we get up off the ledge we're going to drop a piece of food. Eggs work best because they have a bigger hitbox. This will pop you up here. And then you just walk towards the ledge and you should fall onto it. Sometimes. Now I've cut and edited this video but this took me about 10 tries. It's a little bit of luck, I don't have a very consistent setup for it but basically once you've dropped your egg you just want to be holding towards the ledge and then if you've got the right angle you will end up walking on it. I think it has something to do with the timing of when you put the egg down while you're getting up off the ledge as well. And there we go. So again I had to adjust my angle while I was in the air there. On this wall make sure you're on the left hand edge of the wall or you will just fall through the floor. This area was also quite crash heavy as well, I think because Kite is stuck, so I had to do this a few times while uh, using state saves to get to a point where it wouldn't crash. The reason I came in here was because I felt like it might reset the loading trigger that's causing the game to crash when I try and leave Moon Mountain Pass, and it did work. So that's why I came all the way over here, just to see if I could get a clean way out of Cloudrunner Fortress without the game crashing. Again here I'm trying to kind of call Kite over by using her to distract these enemies. You can't attack them from the front, so you need Kite to come and distract them so you can hit them in the back. What you'd need to progress any further in this area is Moon Seeds, which I think these enemies are supposed to drop when they die, but they don't. There's a cutscene later on that talks about Moon Seeds growing in Fox's area, but I've never managed to find any in-game. You can hack them into your inventory and I think they work as intended, but there's no way for us to get up here now because we need to be able to grow a vine with the Moon Seed.
a lot of climbable walls in this game. It's not possible to get off unless you drop a piece of food or activate disguise. So that's what I'm trying to do here, but I'm still stuck clinging to it. So instead I climb back up and I just drop down off the ledge instead. I don't think at this point I knew you could use disguise to detach from a ledge, because if I had done I probably would have just done that. There's a switch just underneath us here that activates a bridge. You're obviously supposed to shoot this from the other side, but you can get it with some precise angling here. The bridge disappears very quickly, and also it's impossible to walk on it. Even if you try and walk on it, you will just fall through it, so there's no point in even trying to cross there. So with that done, I'm going to head back, because I think that might be enough that it will allow me to leave Moon Mountain Pass, which, as luck would have it, it was. I'm going to grab an egg on the way out as well, just so I can click back through the door. The much easier thing to do here, rather than go all the way up to this area and then back, is just to save and quit once you get past the door in Moon Mountain Pass. There's two reasons for this. One, it's easier, and two, we don't actually want Kite with us for what we're about to do. It took me a while to realise this, but we're going to get a lot of crashes in the desert that occur because of Kite being with us, and we found out through testing that actually just leaving Kite behind and not having her in your inventory is what fixes the desert for Force Point Temple, which is where we're going to next. So what I'd suggest is when you get to about here, just save, quit, reload your save. You won't have Kite with you, but you just clip back out through the door and head back to Discovery Falls as normal. That took a little while, but I managed to get both of my food items off the ground as I go back here. I start heading down and then I think, actually, no, I've left an egg up there that I used for the egg platform glitch, so I go back and grab that as well. Leave no egg behind. So we're going to row our way out of Discovery Falls and we're going to head to the desert now. I'm just going to speed this up because there's not much point showing the walk back again. Here we are in the desert then, I just want to show off that I accidentally got this floating box glitch. Boxes are weird and they do this quite often, but I just wanted to get another egg. The desert is a little bit janky. You're supposed to be able to open that statue, it's actually a door, using the spell stone, but you cannot get it open. So instead the devs put in some sort of extra way to get in here where if you kill enough of these tumbleweeds then it just opens the door. You can see one of the pillars to the left hand side of the door rising as you kill these and that for whatever reason unlocks the door. Sometimes one of the pillars will rise, sometimes one of the other pillars will rise. It doesn't really make much sense, I'm not sure why that happens, but that lets us open this door. If you don't have the Spellstone in your inventory, you can still open the door this same way, and Crystal will still have the Spellstone in this cutscene, but it won't go back into your inventory after you've used it to open the door. Reducing my energy. 
Ah, uh, hello again, Crystal. And welcome to Golden Plains. Oh, it's very hot. The heat will cause you a lot of problems. You may want to think about travelling at night. We've got the spellstone, but what now? Cross the sands to find a spell page that is hidden here. It is only with this spell that you can enter the Desert Force Point Temple. He's lying. We're going to use eggs to enter the Desert Force Point Temple. You can't get the scroll because there's a blue goober that blows you off a ledge that stops you from going to get the scroll. You're supposed to be able to smoke him out with fire by putting a tumbleweed underneath him and then setting it on fire with kite. The totem pole that you would have to put the tumbleweed on doesn't spawn and I've never been able to get it to spawn, which is unfortunate. So instead, we're just going to clip in through the side entrance using eggs. The cutscene we just got with the Spellstone Guardian there doesn't happen if you don't have Kite with you, so it's good that I got out of Moon Mountain Pass with her so that you could see that cutscene, but I don't think you even need it to happen to set any triggers or anything like that. It's purely for information. If you hit this guard, he will pop out of existence. That doesn't happen on console. I think it crashes on console from what I've heard. It may only happen if you've done certain other triggers, like getting kite, and then he'll pop out of existence. Otherwise, maybe it crashes. He's not a threat, though, anyway. He won't shoot at you. I'm not sure why he's there. So again, we're just going to clip in through the door here. These doors are really easy to clip through because they're basically one pixel big, so you really don't have to worry too much about your positioning or anything. They're not thick at all, and you can grab both eggs easily as you go back through. Here I'm just trying to get Kite to follow me in, because at this point I was wondering whether the fact that the game was crashing was because Kite was too far away from us, and it wasn't. I'm not sure what enemy the game's trying to distract there, but I just thought it was interesting to get her to do that. There's a new command pops up here, which I think is supposed to be the wait command. Presumably the idea is to get Kite to weigh down this switch so that you can see which of the floor panels you're supposed to be walking on without getting electrocuted. For whatever reason it doesn't work here though, and I've never seen that command come up as tricky either. There's enemies here, you don't need to kill them. I think you can get Kite to distract them, but there's not much of a reason to. They're very easy to kill, you just hit them with your stick. As Fox, you can only kill these guys with lasers by shooting them in the eyeball.
If you light both these torches here, then it'll allow you to put your spellstone in the switch that's just next to us, and that will make the elevator rise. If you light them in the opposite order to what I do here, sometimes the game will crash. Not sure why. I tried for a long time to get down here without the game crashing with Kite with me and no dice. Even if you take the elevator, it's just gonna crash. You can't pause buffer through it, you can't do anything like camera manipulation to stop it, it's just gonna crash. So I came back here after saving and quitting to get Kite out of my inventory and I had no problems coming down here. You can see it's not crashing, a little bit of a loading hitch there but that's it. You don't need Kite with you here because actually there's a cutscene that will spawn her back into the game anyway. That said though, on other saves of this game, I have managed to get down here with Kite in my inventory and it does make one of the cutscenes play more easily. The temple seems to be set up as if to say we've maybe already been here and used one of the spell stones because one of the doors is already open and one of the switches is already activated there. This switch you can activate and then you go through a series of puzzle rooms but you could go the other way and there's a completed or not activated puzzle room as well and I've never got that to activate before. At this point you would get a cutscene if you had Kite in your inventory as you enter this room, but you can trigger that same cutscene by clipping through this door with an egg. If you kill all of the enemies in the room, then it opens a door into the kind of generator area that's in the middle of the room here, and you can press a switch to turn off the generator. If you clip into this room instead of killing the enemies, then the switch isn't active from what I remember, so you can't push it unless you activate that cutscene and kill all of the enemies. I absolutely hate this room. It's an annoying puzzle that takes forever. Sometimes when you shoot that switch, the game will crash. I'm not sure why. It was crashing very consistently when I tried it before, and then I just had to reload a save and come back in a different way. But you shoot these switches to pour sand out of these guys' heads, and it turns off the flames. The Desert Force Point Temple became the Water Force Point Temple in Star Fox Adventures, and this puzzle was still there, it was just they spat water instead of sand.
if you miss one of these guys, you can just hit the switch again to reset them, but I've basically just stayed safe through here to make it easier to hit all of these switches because I really... I've been through this room so many times and it's never fun. It's not an interesting puzzle, you know what to do just by seeing it. It's obvious, it's like, why are we doing this four times, really? So this is a push block puzzle, the floor is ice and the block will come to a stop if it hits a wall. Took me a couple of tries to solve but it's not that hard really and once you know the pattern you just do it the same way every time. So that's turned off the electricity for that half of the temple, so now we can climb up and put our spellstone in the spellstone slot. Except we can't do that because the game is not complete. So that's actually as far as you can get in the Desert Force Point Temple. You can come here with the non-activated spellstone and do all of this just the same way as I've done it here. You still can't place the unactivated spellstone in the slot there. Anyway, here's what happens when you come out of the temple even if you haven't managed to place the spellstone. This pillar seems to become active, but actually if you go over there there's nothing there, and then... And that's basically everything I know how to do as Crystal. It's kind of following the normal sequence order, although you'd usually go back and be Fox before you went to Moon Mountain Pass, because that's what activates the key to allow you into Moon Mountain Pass. At this point what I'd suggest doing is going back to a save where you didn't pick up the spellstone, and then you can swap back to Fox, which is what I'm doing here, and if you've got a spellstone in your inventory you can't swap character, same as if you've got a Krizoa in your inventory. So I swap back to Fox and we get this cutscene. I think the Prince Earthwalker is ready for a new skill. This is the destruct command. Use it to get by those who block your way. 
The issue is that Tricky does not learn distract from this cutscene. He actually learns the ball command, which we already have from digging up the ball originally. If you don't have the ball in your inventory, it doesn't put the ball in your inventory, but nonetheless, it's useless to us. Because of this, Fox can't progress naturally, because the distract command is needed for a specific boss fight later on. I might make a video later of here's what I know how to do as Fox. There's lots of areas you can get to with Fox and there are cutscenes you can see even without cheats, but you can't make any true progression with him. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's interesting and potentially helpful to you. A lot of what I've shown off here is kind of speedrun strats. We do have a budding speedrunning community who are already running some categories with cheats enabled, such as getting to the first boss and getting the first spellstone as Fox, which is possible with cheats on, getting Crystal's first Crozoa and then banking it, things like that. So they're using some of these strategies as well. I've been streaming this game a lot on Twitch and I've been exporting all of the raw footage to my group YouTube channel that I have with lunchtime.org.uk so I'll link that in the description and I'll also link it at the end of the video here. There's links below to the Dinosaur Planet Discord that I'm part of. People are making new discoveries in this game every day. They're really data mining it, going at it with hacking tools and things just to see what happens if you set certain flags in memory, things like that. So there's a lot more to this game than what I've shown here. If you want to see a sequence that's not busted and kind of follows the story much more closely because it's using cheats to be able to pick up keys and things like that, then I would suggest checking out Yume Aislin's YouTube channel. I mentioned her earlier, I'll link her in the description as well. I'll link some other people as well like Jeebs and Hashashin and other people who have found useful stuff that have helped me with this run too. So thank you to everyone who's been involved in the project and maybe I'll be back with a Fox video at some point.